Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is episode 164 of Child Care Rockstar Radio, featuring Michael Ingram. Oh, I've got a good one for you today, folks. Mr. Michael Ingram of Bedford Heights Daycare, founded by his mama five decades ago. This is a great episode, and I can't wait for you to meet my friend Michael. He and his mom have impacted thousands of families in and around Cleveland, Ohio, which is where I was born and where I'm from, where I was raised. So this episode has a special place in my heart, and Michael is a special human. You will hear him talk about some spiritual components of building businesses and entrepreneurship. You will hear him talk about his give back and how he gives back to different communities every week in Cleveland, including folks with Parkinson's, foster care kids, and boys at risk and how he is driven to serve and continue to build a bigger impact with his life. And so it's a very inspirational episode that we have queued up for you today. So you will definitely not want to go anywhere. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors of the podcast, PB&J TV. Whether you currently stream or are interested in video streaming to your families, PB&J TV has developed an entirely new way for preschools to engage families through their video streaming platform. Introducing PB&J TV's event streaming. For those of you who are current streamers, you likely have a set number of logins per day, but with PB&J TV, you can schedule fun events for parents to tune into. Instead of randomized logins throughout the day, what if instead you could schedule circle time viewing at nine or dino dig up viewing at two o'clock, Parents will receive an in-app alert to tune into those captivating moments for a few minutes. Think of it like the Snapchat of the childcare industry. Very, very cool. If you're not a streamer yet, PB&J TV has a comprehensive administrative program to better manage your school with robust streaming and AI technology. Check out their latest releases in Gun Threat and Unattended Child AI at pbnjtv.com. And... We also want to thank our friends over at ProCare for sponsoring today's episode. Automation has the power to save you hours of time running your childcare business while helping you grow and thrive in a competitive industry. When you embrace automation, you get more time to focus on providing quality care. With ProCare, you get a fully integrated childcare center management solution that can help you streamline operations, enhance communication, improve how you collect tuition and process payments, increase parent satisfaction, and ultimately grow your business by becoming more efficient. Want to learn how ProCare can help you grow your business and save you between 60 and 80 hours a month? Go to ProCare.Solutions forward slash Rockstar to try ProCare and make no payments until 2024. That's ProCare.Solutions forward slash Rockstar. All right, folks, we are back from the summit. I'm recording this from my home office. We had an incredible time in Orlando. Uh, By the time you're hearing this, it'd be about a month ago. And it was just a phenomenal summit. You might've seen some of the buzz on social media. People were saying it was the best summit ever, which I wholeheartedly agree with. Uh, We took the content to a new level uh, around business building and leadership. We did a live assessment where all the people in the audience took a quiz to get an assessment on the health of their business and then compare themselves and benchmark themselves to the full room. Uh, We did not break the internet. We thought we might, uh, having 1,300 people on there at once taking an online assessment, but it's very, very cool. So much information. We talked leadership. We had an incredible time with Damon John, who could not get enough of our exhibit hall. He was just walking around meeting all of our sponsor and exhibitor friends and just having a great time. So if you missed it, you missed a lot. 
We did announce that we're going to be at the summit around that same date range, the second weekend uh, of October, and it's going to be in Chicago this year. So we're excited for 2024 and who knows what will be on the stage with us. It's going to be incredible. Don't miss it. Let's see. I want to let you know that Mr. Michael Ingram, who you're about to meet, is an incredible human. He's one of my favorites. Um, not that I play favorites among our Academy members, but he's just a special human. And I know that that will come across to you as you listen to the episode or watch it on YouTube. He talks about his philosophy. He talks about the things that set his program apart. And he also talks about becoming a childcare badass which he feels that he got that confidence and those business, the, the ability to take his business to the next level in badassery from the Academy and from his relationships. He actually was able to pull a, a substantial stream of revenue from the state of Ohio's additional programs for um, special rights children and special needs children. So he's serving those kids and he's got a lot of, extra care givers coming in, people that are consultants and special interest uh, teachers. So he's got all of these resources coming into his classrooms to assist these kids. And it's also taking a lot of load off of his existing teachers. So expanding the team by expanding his reach to underserved communities and to children that really need extra help which has then enabled him to add new streams of grant funding and money into his program so that he can continue to do cool things for his tribe and his community. So it's like a win, 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 <laughs> if you think about it that way. And he's going to talk us through how he did it and a lot more here on Child Care Rockstar Radio. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. I am very excited to bring to you today a great friend of mine, Mr. Michael Ingram. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Chris? I'm great. Uh, Michael, welcome to the podcast. I'm thrilled to have you here. Uh, for those in the Academy that know you, which is pretty much everyone, you are definitely a special human and very beloved. And so I thought it was about darn time to bring you to the podcast. So thanks for being here with me today. For sure. For sure. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So where are you right now? So I'm in Menor, Ohio. So I live probably 35 minutes away from my school. I live near the water in Menor. And so I, I know just like you, the water is super important to me, right? I love yeah. the water. When you go to the water, it's like everyone has problems, right? But when you go to the water, they don't seem as large. It's yes. Just, yeah. Yeah, we can talk more about that. I have a lot of thoughts about that particular topic, but as you know. Um, but before we dive into all of that, tell us a little bit more about your early learning journey and the program that you uh, own in Cleveland. Yeah, so uh, my mom started our uh, school 49 years ago, so we'll be going into our 50th year, which is unheard of, right, in early care. Wow. And We've been in the same spot um, in Bedford Heights, uh, just outside of Cleveland, and uh, we're licensed for 96 students, and uh, we have about 125 because we have uh, part-time as well, school-agers, and we're 18 months through 13 years of age. Yeah. Awesome. So 49 years is, whew, that is an incredible journey. Um my mom was an original girl boss, right? Yeah. When, when uh when it maybe wasn't as cool to be a girl boss. And now she's now she's uh rocked it out and been there for 49 years and influenced the community so, you know, amazingly. So amazingly. I wonder if you did the math on how many children impacted, it would be a lot. It would be, you know, uh, life-changing for that community. And so is she, is she gonna, um, I mean, is she still working or just kind of showing up for the schools as like a brand ambassador or is she completely out of the business now? 
Oh no, she comes. She comes <laughs> and she does the things that she loves, like yeah. um, going shopping and buying supplies for the staff. And she'll always have her finger on it, right? She's the type of person who needs to get out of the house, needs to, um, you know, just be around the children, right? She doesn't, she doesn't love the administrative piece. She doesn't love the math piece. She just loves loving on the kids, right? And yeah. so that's what she does. And I handle all the other things, right? Right. <laughs> cool. Well, tell us a little bit about your particular journey, because at whatever age you were, you decided to join your mom in this mission. And then any any key note, notable moments, either before that decision or since that decision. So arguably, you could say I, I've been there for 22 years. I thought it was going to be one summer and now it's turned into 22 years. Wow. Um, wow. Or you could say that I've been there for 42 years because I've been there the whole entire time. My mom has had the school. Um, I came in just thinking it was going to be a layover um, on a journey elsewhere, and it has afforded me an amazing life. Uh, and it's uh, allowed me to give back to the community, which is super important to me. That give back is huge because um, I just think when you give back, things come back twofold. And, and it's amazing, right? And so I guess the turning point in the business for me was when I started um, looking at it as a business, right? I, before I was like, oh, you know, my mom owns a school. It's, you know. She she has a few kids, whatever. Not a few kids. We had we had ninety six, but right. when I started seeing the direct impacts that we could have on the community and how knowing our numbers and knowing how to fill the seats would not only make a beautiful life for us, but also support all of the employees that we have in our building and support our families. So that was probably the turning point in my journey in, um, you know, the childcare space. Mm -hmm. Love it. And do you, I, I believe you also have another side business or two, like you're a true entrepreneur because you have multiple businesses, right? I do Is have true? another yeah. business. Yeah. My dad's also in the business. Um, okay. <laughs> so I call him Mr. Doug. His name's Doug, right? Uh, it's so, so funny when we go places, I'm like, oh yeah, this is Mr. Doug, but he also happens to be my dad. Uh, Brett, <laughs> Prior to the pandemic, uh, we started uh, um, an automotive garage, right? And so we thought we saw a need in the industry to help uh, early care uh, owners with their buses. So we help oh. out care buses and we fix buses and maintain those. And we get those certified in um, our county and the state of Ohio. And so we work with a lot of child care centers across um, the Cleveland area, helping them to support their buses and helping them to um, just have cool. the opportunity. Yeah. All right. Love that. So that's kind of your dad's lane a little bit more. He likes that's to do my that. my dad's lane. Yeah. So the spiel is when people ask what you do is I say, I bring all the money in and he spends it. <laughs> but that's his lane now. He That's his yeah. baby, uh, the automotive business. Right. Uh, share a little bit with our audience um, more about your personal side. What do you enjoy doing for fun? And then, you know, there in Cleveland, you've lived in Cleveland all your life. So do you travel? Do you have other interests? Just give us a little bit more, Michael, behind sure, the scenes. Sure, sure. Yeah. So I love to travel. I, I've been to numerous countries. My favorite is India. Um, I happen to also be a yoga teacher. And so I went to India on an Ayurvedic retreat. Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. So all of the beautiful things that enhance yoga. And so I was in, in India for a month and uh, it was a life-changing experience. It was eye-opening and just helped me tap into my mission and vision. So I love to travel. Mm. Um, one of my favorite trips is a fun fact about me is I haven't lived in Cleveland all my life. I was actually born in Wyoming. Oh, my parents met on a blind date in Wyoming. And so I was, I, I was right. Random, right. I was, uh, born in Casper, Wyoming. So for my 40th birthday, we took a trip out West and, um, the Rockies are beautiful, but when you turn that corner and you see the Tetons, it's like life changing, right? Mm -hmm. 
It, it yeah. was just so amazing. Um, so I love to travel. And I, I've also been writing. So I'm in a question. I've been writing for 35 plus years. So oh, that, wow. yeah, that okay. my meditation as well, writing. And that's been amazing. You know, just having that connection with a horse and just being outside. It's just, it, it frees your mind. Yes, absolutely. So between horses and water and freeing the mind, we're going to talk more about that whole journey, that spiritual side later on in the podcast. Um, Definitely want to hit that. Uh, Yeah. So fun fact, uh, date in Wyoming that turned into you being born. And uh, my son is in Wyoming in Cheyenne, which isn't nearly as pretty as Jackson, which is where the Tetons are. So I completely agree with you. I've seen all different parts of that state um, as well as the Rockies. So. But, uh, but yeah, the land of Cleve is where you are. And that is something you and I have common because I actually was born in Cleveland at St. John's Hospital, which is no longer there and grew up in Cleveland. And um, so you and I definitely have that in common as well as several other things, which is super cool. So, and I didn't know about the yoga thing. So I love that because that taps into that spiritual component too in the Ayurveda as well. Yeah. So love that. So I teach unique populations, Chris. So um, mm. I teach yoga to boys in the juvenile correctional. So boys, yeah, who are struggling with, um, you know, just life. Uh, yeah. I teach Parkinson's. So people who have Parkinson's, I teach them and through yoga, they learn daily living skills and how to be, uh, deal with their Parkinson's. And I, I, there's a huge need across America um, and probably the world as well. I, I teach foster children too. Uh, there's not enough foster care homes. And so I teach children who are living at actual the DCFS, the, the you know, the protective services. So I see them every yeah. week and I teach yoga to them. So I teach these unique populations. And then for fun, I have uh, 15 ladies that I teach every Tuesday night. Uh, for the last 10 years and they're all retired and they actually fund my other yoga classes. They give to all of those students who wouldn't traditionally be able to have yoga or, um, you know, just anything great in their life. They're in a struggle. Wow. Okay. I think you just blew the entire audience away as well as myself. That's just amazing, Michael. So amazing. You know, my son, when he was, he was in a program, he was definitely a boy at risk. Um, like, luckily I got him to Utah to a program before he did end up in, in juvie, but he had, uh, you talked, she talked about horses. They actually did equine therapy with those boys as well. Um, and so yoga and, and equine and those levels of therapy for our kids at risk, uh, the foster care kids, I can't even imagine how you're impacting them and the Parkinson's. So, uh, this is just a fantastic story. I would love to meet these ladies. I'd love to come to Cleveland and do yoga one time with these ladies and like, give you a big check. So, yeah, they they love it. it. We have dinner together afterwards every week too. Wow. That's amazing. I love it. So let's talk a little bit about early childhood in terms of your, your program. What are some of the top well, first of all, what is the actual name of the school or center? What's the brand name? So we've been there um, for 50 years. It's called Bedford Heights Daycare, but we refer to it as BHDC. And so, yeah, Bedford okay. Heights Daycare. Okay, cool. And uh, what are some of the top unique benefits or features that you feel set you apart in your market? So definitely that longevity, right? That being there for 50 years. Um, and that's what carried us for such a long time. But I, I, I know you know this, and, and some people in the academy know this. I'm huge into manifestation, right? And so prior to the pandemic, I manifested, how am I going to help these children in my building who have increased needs? And so I found a therapy partner who came into my building. And so we offer in my school ABA therapy. So children who are neurally diverse, we have um, up to 30 hours a week um, for them with a one-on-one. We have um, speech and OT in our building and social emotional help. And so it's just helped all of our students so much and elevated them and helped them just get ready for kindergarten and even just deal with 
day-to-day issues. And the best thing, the people in the academy and and my business owners out here, they'll love this, right? Um, We're doing amazing things for the kids, but the best thing is I have an additional 15 to 20 people in my building that are not on my payroll, that I don't pay, who help support all of the students in my building. Yes, absolutely. Which is gold for helping your teacher uh, and engagement and just helping teachers not be exhausted and burn out and then quit. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so I would say that's our unique benefit right now. We're, mm-hmm. We take the children who traditionally wouldn't fit into uh, uh, an early care space, not because the teachers or other schools don't want them. They're just not equipped as well as we are because we have those additional supports. And so are you funding that all through um, programs that are available in Ohio or in Cuyahoga County? So so the, the beautiful thing is my therapy partner and I is that she does all of the insurance. She bills all of their insurance. And the best thing about um, what I can do and help support the children is for every child that I have that I get uh, a plan of care for, I get double funding from the state of Ohio. So there's only about 25 to 30 of us who actually tap into that, are able to tap into that. So you know, I'm ele- I'm able to elevate that seat to help support all the children to get, you know, more manipulatives to increase the teachers in the classroom. And so that that's really the niche behind it. And that's where we're able to really tap into that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Is there anything else that so I mean, those are the two big ones, the longevity, and then this extra level of care and yeah. uh, resources, anything else about your program that you want to brag on? Yeah. So um, another beautiful thing is uh, we have five acres and that's unheard of in uh, in the area. Wow. At, right. And so what we lack maybe in classroom size, we have so much outdoor space. We have two outdoor classrooms um, and, and we just have a huge, beautiful playground that the kids are able to get out there and be out there in green space. Most of our Students live in apartments, and so they don't have that opportunity to be outside. So that's a huge selling point for our school as well. Yeah, love that. As you're looking towards 2024, are you kind of just doing the status quo of all of the, like you're impacting so many humans. So as you look at, because we're in October, so you might be like for myself, I'm thinking about, well, what do I want my 2024 to really be and and how do I want to grow and shift and change? And you talked about manifestation. So as you think ahead, are there any like desires or, you know, things that you're trying to manifest for the coming year in terms of where you're going to go with all these different ways that you're impacting humans? Yeah, for sure. You know, one of the, one of the best things about finding you and finding the Academy, my story is a little bit different than other people in terms of I was fully enrolled and all of those things. Um, but the thing that caught my attention is when you talked about leaving money on the table and it, and the people in the academy know me, I don't leave any money on the table, right? Um, but then I was like, let me take Chris's thought to the next level. And so now my manifestation, my journey is not to have one funding source per child, but multiple, right? And so I have at least three sometimes for my students, but I'm always trying to manifest more funding sources to help those families. So that seat will increase. So I, you know, the cost of the seat, so I can keep giving back to the children and just allow them to have an amazing experience. Well, that's amazing. The multiple funding sources component, and then the more funding and the more money that you get, you can do more things and grow your impact. Right. Um, So I absolutely love it. Let's talk a little bit about your team, your leadership and your leadership style. Uh, tell me more about your administrative team. Who do you have running your school with you at the top? How have you developed them over time? So before I met the Academy and and you, Chris, I thought I had to do everything right. I was like, I I am a bit of a control freak. Um, and so I thought, well, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. Right. And, And through meeting people in the Academy, listening and, um, being at the table, I've learned that, 
I don't have all those amazing, unique brilliances, every single one of them, right? And so I had to hand things off. And so I have a, a mentor teacher. Um, she was with me in the past. She left and then came back. And now she's even greater uh, than before. She, you know, sometimes you got to go away and then yeah. come back, right? And, and then you get locked in even more. And so I have her and then I have... Um, I have uh, someone who is like the operations manager. She uh, handles all of the things that don't deal with uh, education, right? She handles um, the enrollment, all of those things. And so I have them at the top and, and they help me and I just pour into them and they, I'm the visionary, right? At my school, like I want to do 50 things. I'm like, let's do this. Let's do this. I come back from the summit, the, the quarterlies. I have like a list of 25 things and they're like, slow down. You can pick three, right? Right. So uh, they, they keep me in my lane. And uh, so that's been the best thing ever. Knowing that I don't have to um, do everything that I can hand things off and empower others to, uh, to make those amazing things happen. Yeah. I love the mentor teacher and the mentorship is huge for teacher engagement and retention. Is there anything else that you would point to in trying to improve the lives for teachers at your program? Things that you've done either, yeah. you know, things either, you know, quality, quality of life, quantity of benefits, you know, both sides of the coin, anything you want to speak to there? So behind every, I think every entrepreneur, you have someone who's like your your wingman or your support person, right? I have that person in my life. And uh, we, every month, I try to give back to my employees. And I, I post in some of the Facebook groups for the Academy. I bake for them every month um, and write them little fun messages. I don't personally bake. I just bring them. I, I support that. But we just had our Christmas in July party. And it was by the water, right? So at first they were complaining like, uh, I don't, why do we have to drive 35 minutes away from the school? But then when they got to the water and they right. got to be there in a new space and, and they felt like, oh my gosh, this is like amazing, right? And I have a, a, I have someone cook for them and I have the table set out beautiful for them, just elevating them in and letting them know how much their impact uh, is seen on a day-to-day -day basis and how I just want to give back to them, important to them, because they are the, the heartbeat of our business. Mm -hmm. So I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about the spiritual journey. Um, since you are, you know, I know that you're, you've, you're doing yoga, you're into the Ayurveda, and also you and I have spoken before privately about both being huge fans or followers or readers of Eckhart Tolle, watching his videos, listening to his audios. Um, and I, I want to share that, you know, this actual business that I have created was born from stillness because I was actually on my yoga mat, Michael, uh, when in, in Cleveland, when at a mommy and me yoga class, although the kids were next door and it was just the moms in Hudson, Ohio, and I got basically what some people call either a knock on the door or a whisper or a download or whatever you want to call it. That was basically telling me that I should go build something in childcare. And that's basically what came in when I was, I was laying at the, the final pose that everybody loves so much is Shavasana because you get to finally just lay there. Right. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. So I want to talk about being still. And I want to talk also about being still in nature because you talked about water and horses and all of these are, you know, parts of being as a human that I think we often lose as we have become more and more and more busy and more and more having our attention pulled away from the places of stillness and going deep in nature and having the, cap the capacity to quiet our minds so that we can hear the whisper. So you can hear what you're actually trying to manifest and you can get ideas for things that come to you seemingly from, you know, from, from wherever that comes from the universe or God or whatever. So, so talk a little bit about that. Do, do you have practices that you do around trying to be still? Do you practice meditation? Do you just, you, when you're on your yoga mat, are these are things, do you do yoga by the water? Like, just talk a little bit about how you've cultivated this into your life? 
Sure. Uh, let me give the caveat that uh, the Buddha says you teach what you need to learn. So uh, I speak all of these things, but sometimes I need to learn these things, right? Yeah. I do have a hard time being still. And that probably is my, um, maybe that'll be my my meditation for life, just sitting in the, um, so in yoga, we have a word, it's yeah. called chit, C-H-I-T. Sounds yeah. like another word. <laughs> you know, it's, that, it's that monkey mind that we have, right? Yeah. So, uh, through yoga, through meditation, we get rid of that chit. And so that is what uh, the practice does for me. And I also have to say yoga is like a relationship, like with your husband, your wife, your partner. Sometimes you want it like close by to you. Sometimes you're like, get the hell away from me, right? <laughs> because it is a mirror. It's a mirror for all of the things that are in your life. And, yeah. um, and but I think at the most pivotal parts of my life, um, I have been able to quiet down and I've been able to lock into that uh, that whisper that you talked about where uh, you just know, right? It's just like a knowing. Yeah. It's knowing and it's a manifestation and mm -hmm. it's an understanding. And, and and honestly, there's more of those than there's not. We just don't pay attention. Yes. Yeah. So I talked about that at the last mastermind retreat was developing your intuitional knowing, your the muscle or the intuitional sixth sense. And the more that you get into a place of stillness or quieting your mind or the chit, you open up space for the intuitional knowledge to come in. And then it's just, yeah. you have this strong knowing and people are like, well, how did you know? And, you know, we've all had that experience. Well, I just knew. Um, and, yeah. and sometimes you have to, there's like an amazing quote. I, I can't remember who it's by. It's a, uh, a monk and he says you have to let the old tea spill to pour the new tea right and so we have to let that old uh chit that old um monkey mind we have to let that go for that new uh beautiful beginner's mind to come in mm -hmm. so a lot of the people that will be at the summit which we're recording this a week before we're all going to go to orlando you guys won't hear this episode until after the summit's over but a lot of the folks that we're going to meet next week michael are newer either newer to the industry they're trying to start their own child care center maybe they're moving from home to center or they're still coming out of the COVID blues. They're not able to hire. They just haven't kind of gotten their act or their business back together to where it was in 2019. And this is very, very, very common. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit, give some, some pointers or some tips or just some, you know, maybe some fresh mindset approaches to somebody who just, she just can't seem to get off the hot mess express. You know, it's like, no matter what, she tries and she's just kind of a whirling dervish and she shows up and she's trying to do all the things. And you mentioned that you felt like you had to do all the things and then you realized that you didn't. So what advice do you have for people that really are struggling as owners still in our industry right now? So one of my favorite quotes and most owners are entrepreneurs and, um, one of my favorite quotes and what probably led me to the Academy was, um, it's a quote by Rumi, and he says, um, when you're setting out on a journey, don't ask for advice from people who've never left home, right? And so by that, I mean that we have amazing partners, we have amazing um, best friends, uh, amazing people in our life, right? But sometimes we go to those people and ask advice about being an entrepreneur or about being a leader, and they're not leaders, and they're not entrepreneurs. Yeah. And they want to give you great advice, but they're not able to because they're not in that space. So find a tribe, right? And so that is what the most amazing thing about being in the academy or being any mastermind group is around like-minded people who support you, right? And, and I spoke before about, um, I didn't have the same journey as some people who came into the academy, but you know what the academy gave me? It allowed me to be a badass. It allowed me to say, Ohio, give me a million dollar grant to help special needs students. Ohio, allow me to get double funding for all of my students. Ohio, allow me to do this. And that's because I had all of these people in a network that supported me. 
And one of the best things about being in a network is I'm on a lot of calls and a lot of people are complaining about things. But yeah. when you go on a call with your tribe, everyone is talking about their wins. Yes. Never thought I would say this, Chris, but I get more excited hearing about the wins of the people in my pod. My pod is on fire. Every month we meet and I get so giddy about hearing about how amazing they're doing in their schools. It, it just like, it ramps yeah. you up. And so if you're on that hot mess express, if you're that person in the audience at the summit and you're not sure, should I, should I join the Academy? You need to run. You need to run and find the nearest coach because I know it's going to not only grow you as a person, but it's going to allow your business to just bloom. Well, thank you for saying that. I can't agree with you more. And I think that the biggest strength of the Academy is the positivity and the celebration, the wins culture, the, the culture of wins, instead of complaining, we are celebrating and we are kicking ass. Like you said, is it's making you a badass because you know that you have the strength of the coaches and the tribe beneath you and with you that is just propelling you up to wherever you want to go. So thank you for saying that. It's a beautiful thing to watch yeah. um, and to experience, especially I, I do. I used to run pods and I do actually miss running pods because hearing those wins on all the pod calls is definitely something that was something I looked forward to every single week. So there's not a day, Chris, probably that doesn't go by that I don't speak to someone from the academy too that just supports me. And I just want to share a quick story. Um, th probably the best thing from being in the mastermind groups or the academy is, you know, we teach, you teach in the academy to work on your business, not in your business. But sometimes you got to go in your business and you got to get dirty, right? Yep. And so about three or four months ago, I was having some leadership turnover. I had to get dirty, right? I had to get into my business. Yeah. One of my good friends from the Academy, Ala, she's also one of my Ohio girls, right? Um, we couldn't be any different. I'm like this wheel, this yogi living by the water, um, you know, bald, middle-aged guy. She's this uh, devout Muslim, beautiful, uh, quiet, uh -huh. you know, salt of the earth woman, right? Yeah. Somehow we became friends because we were on a call um, for Ohio and uh, she was saying how she needed to move the needle on her business. I was like, you should join the Academy. This is even before I was in the Academy, but <laughs> and um, I was in my business and she hadn't heard from me for a month. She tracked me down and found me to make sure that I was okay. Wow. The benefit of being in mastermind groups. Yeah. Knowing that sometimes it can be lonely at the top and sometimes I got to check in on my pod friends or my even my academy friends, right? Yeah. Forever, I'll be grateful for the academy for bringing all of the friendships that I have made. Yeah, completely agree. And it makes you a stronger leader, stronger human, stronger entrepreneur and a stronger business. So, um, so I love that. Thank you for saying that. Um, Let's talk a little bit about impact in terms of, you know, who, when you look back at your journey so far, who, what are one or two people that have had the biggest impact on your life? So, I, you know, my parents have been a huge impact on my life, right? Um, I work with them. I've worked for them for almost 20 years. We are all very hard headed. We all uh, think whatever uh, we think is the best, right? But but they have instilled that entrepreneurial um, gene in me, right? That allowed me to say, like, you, I can do whatever I want. I can, I can ask for millions of dollars because I deserve it and I'm helping families. So right. I would say my parents have been a huge impact on my life, you know. And, and like I said before, every entrepreneur has someone in their life that is feeding them quietly that we don't always talk about, right? Yep. It could be your partner, it could be your parents. And so I have that too. You know, I have that person in my life that is always pouring into me and calling me out on my BS, right? Because yeah. sometimes we have BS. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I I could I, I could talk to people all day long. And then I, I have these people in my life that like 
uh, you're you're quoting all of these amazing quotes. Are you living that? And I don't have to be like, oh, maybe I'm not. Maybe I need to <laughs> circle back, right? So I, I would say those are the people that have impacted me the most. Love that. Well, we are nearing the end of our time, Michael. Um, is there anything, are there any other thoughts that you have that you want to share with this amazing audience because thousands of childcare leaders and owners will be tuning into this episode. So anything else that you want to share that you want to leave with the audience? Sure. Can I leave you with one of my favorite mantras from um, my yoga classes, right? And so it's a Sanskrit mantra. And so I'm going to say it for you. And then I'll let you know what it means in English. It's Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. And I think it it encompasses everything that early childhood um, does. It's may all beings everywhere be happy and free. May my words and actions contribute to them in some special way. Mm, love that. Thank you. Very special. We need to get the spelling of all of that so we can put that actual in actually in the show notes. I got so you. you. Send it to me. Okay, good. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I want to give you a special shout out because you sent me a gift a few months ago. I don't know how many months ago it was, a while ago. But it's a very, very cool photograph of a train track in Cleveland, Ohio. And you wrote something special in the back related to journeys. And it's actually hanging up on my office right, right over there. I can look at it right now. And so I wanted to thank you um, publicly for sending me such a special gift. And it's just, uh, it's a, you know, that that's what basically is demonstrated by the fact that you're such a special human. And so you're, you have a very special place in my heart, Michael Ingram. And I just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, what you're doing and especially with us, with us both being from Cleveland and that I know that you're impacting uh, thousands of families in our hometown um, and making their lives better is, is just very, very special to me. So thank you for being on the podcast today. Um, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And at the summit in a week. Yeah. I'll see you at the summit in a week. And also let's leave the audience with how can they learn more about you, your program, any contact information or website that you want to share. Yeah, for sure. So if you want to contact me, it's my email is just michael at bhdaycare.org. And uh, you can send me any ideas. I, I, I talk to people all the time about special rights students and how to impact them in their own programs. I love to talk on the phone. I love to talk via Zoom. So call me. And we'll awesome. Talk. All right. Thank you so much, Michael. Take care. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this very special episode of child care rockstar radio take care and god bless thanks michael thanks bye bye i hope you liked this episode of child care rockstar radio if you did please share it with someone you know and help spread the word to your friends in our industry and on social media child care business success is my passion and i'm honored to be on this journey with you as a thank you for listening Learn more about how to grow your business and make more income with our brand new free quiz, the What's My Number One Income Killer quiz, exclusively for preschool and child care owners. Take the quiz today at childcarequiz.com to discover what your number one income killer is and how to solve it. Take care and God bless.